So this is how I'd go about taking the hydraulic inlet assembly out of a 600 or 800 combi. Now looking at it, it's in a similar place to the Duotex and the Platinums. And the only difference at the moment I can see, personally, is there's a red top oil effect sensor on that one. Now that tells me that there's a turbine type hydraulic inlet assembly inside this one. So the clear plastic ones with a float switch up and down, bobbin type. The red top ones were turbines spinning around. So, in order to get onto that, I need to remove the low water pressure switch. So I need to drain the pressure off the boiler with the drain off underneath, isolate the flow and the return. And then if I take off these two wires here, I should be able to, you could get a set of grips on the metal part there or a spanner on the, the nut part there and then just unscrew this like so. And there's a rubber washer inside. And then unclip the Hall effect sensor off the hydraulic inlet assembly. So I just wiggle him up and out of the way. Again, wires in from the bottom. And then grab my 18 mil socket, which has made its way over there now. So again, cold mains off, make sure it's 100% not crossed over. So on the 600 and the 800s, what you'd be doing is isolating the cold mains and pulling your easy fill filling loop. And if you pull that down, you shouldn't be able to hear any water. If you can hear water, it's crossed over or something somewhere is passing. So whatever you do, don't whip out the hydraulic inlet assembly if you can hear water when that's isolated, because you'll get wet. Okay, so uh, cold mains off. And now we can get onto there, can't we? Look at that, lovely. So if we flick our little ratchet over. Now these do look very similar. I've been to jobs in the past where customers have said that, you know, they've had engineers out and they've still got no hot water. And what's happened is they've gone to change the hydraulic inlet assembly. So they've, they've taken it out because the, you know, the red light on the mag, uh, the hall effect sensor is not coming on. So quite rightly, they've diagnosed it and they've gone to the merchant and said, I need one of these, mate. And the merchants turned around and went, oh, you need one of them? And you go, yes, one of them. Now, if we look closely, so clear top, Duotex Platinums, spring in the middle, and then red top, we've got no spring in the middle. You see that there? So this one here is a turbine type. So that spins round and round and round and round. And that one just goes dump, and then turn the water off, and it goes off. So, pop that to one side. So again, we've got a little filter on the bottom there. So we should have a little gauze filter inside. There's the gauze filter. So if we just ping that out there. And now if I drop this out, we should be able to see how this basically works. So what we have here is the turbine. Okay. And when you run the hot tap, it just spins very, very fast. And this here is a series of staggered magnets. So you imagine that, that is just there like that resting near the hall effect, the little black chip. Okay, and then you run the hot tap and it zooms like that, okay? Uh, if I get my screwdriver, you might be able to see. There you go, so it's not one continuous magnet, it's like a staggered magnet that is there. Okay. So if I pop that down. Now, Duotex Platinums, bobbin type, float switch type, Take that one out, or you can see. There we go. That is just one continuous magnet, that is. Okay. It just shoots up, and then you turn the tap off, and it drops back down. So that is the difference between the float switch type and the turbine type. Now, what you wouldn't be able to do is you wouldn't be able to spin a magnet or a magnetic screwdriver fast enough. So if you're trying to test this, you wouldn't be able to do that. Because trust me, that is spinning 100 miles an hour, that is. The only way you'd probably do it is if you had like a, I don't know, a magnetic drill bit on your drill, and then you just zoom like that. Um, so you wouldn't be able to spin that fast enough, okay? But on this one, if you've got a magnetic screwdriver, all you need to do is just poke it next to that black chip there and the red light should come on. Um, so that's the easiest way of checking the Hall effect sensors. But I did a video on that previously. So guys and girls, I hope you found the video useful. I hope you're all staying safe and your families are doing well. Until next time, take care.